Welcome to Bible 360 Romans. Paul wants to use the church in Rome as a jumping off point for a missionary journey to Spain. Paul wants all Jews and Gentiles alike to hear the gospel. Paul argues God's always valued faith over legalism. He contends you don't need to become Jewish before becoming Christian for all human hearts are twisted, therefore all must rely on God's righteousness. Paul starts saying the whole world was given a moral compass and knew there was a creator who deserved reverence. But instead of following their conscience, the nations instead gave into all kinds of wicked and evil practices, including idolatry, sexual immorality, greed, and all manner of heartless and ruthless actions. The world is condemned for its wickedness. But then Paul brings it home to his Jewish brethren. If you bemoan the wickedness of others, then you're in the same boat. The evil you despise in others, you do the same things. Gentiles knew better in their conscience, and Jews should especially have known better from the Torah, but both fail. Simply knowing right from wrong Having the law hasn't fixed anyone. So were all God's interactions with Israel a waste? No, the problem is while God is righteous, no one else is. The history of Israel, whether in the Exodus or the exile demonstrates this. Without a shadow of doubt, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Nobody, Gentile or Jew, can boast about knowing what's right and wrong because even when we know what's right, we don't do it. Being made right with God only comes through faith in Christ and the promise that he gives to raise us up with Christ. Uh, but what's to be done about this corruption of the human heart and mind? Well, it's been taken care of. Because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When Adam, the father of humanity, sinned, the consequences were universal, curse and thereafter condemnation. But turnabout is fair play. If one man's sin can lead to death for all those born from him, so too one man's new victory over sin and death has led to universal life for a new humanity, those who are born of Jesus. How can we be born of Jesus? We're connected back to Jesus' death in our baptism. We have died with Christ and raised, been raised with him in baptism into death. Therefore, live like you're dead to sin and wicked desires. You used to be obsessed and driven by sins and selfishness, now, though, we are part of a new creation in Christ. So instead of being driven by sin, be driven to live for Christ. Since you're free and you get to pick now, which would you rather sell out for? Sin, which leads to death, or Jesus, who gives life to you and others? Paul acknowledges it's a struggle. We want to do good, but evil is right there with us. We sometimes lose our battle to our flesh. Once again, we can't look within ourselves to overcome evil. We must look to Christ. Thanks be to God who rescues us through Jesus from this mortal peril. Sin and those controlled by it lead lives that are headed towards destruction, not only in this life, but eternally. The sinful flesh is hostage to sin and therefore hostile to God. However, our sins no longer have power to condemn us anymore because Jesus has overcome them. Going forward now, we listen to God's spirit, not our flesh any longer. At times we groan and are frustrated as is all of creation, but Jesus has already turned the tide and his death has won us the victory. After all, if God sent his very own son to die for us, then who could be against us? It doesn't matter who or what opposes or accuses us, ain't nothing in all creation can stop Jesus. Jesus has won, and as we are connected to him, we can't lose. Like Abraham, we are simply waiting for God's promises to be fulfilled. So how could Israel lose then? How could the people of God he called be replaced or rejected? Has God lied or failed? Paul recalls the story of Abraham's sons, Ishmael and Isaac. God's promise to make Abraham the father of many nations didn't work it through Ishmael, if you recall, who was a son of Abraham. But it turns out the promise didn't depend in some mechanical way upon Abraham producing a child. Similarly, it was not Isaac's older son and the natural heir, Esau, but the younger son, Jacob, who Yahweh blessed. Paul's point is, <laughs> Even with the patriarchs, it was not about lineage or genetics, but about faith and God's promises. Prophets like Hosea, Isaiah, Moses, and Elijah all preached that a complacent Israel was not gonna be delivered simply because of whose children they were. Only a remnant would be saved, those who trusted in the Lord. Even Moses giving Israel a Torah didn't earn them any extra points. The best thing about Yahweh's relationship with Israel was that he came near to them. He was with them. God coming near to his people is still the most important thing. Now he does so in Christ crucified for us. So if some miss the boat, that's nothing new. People have always been rejecting Yahweh's plans. What is new is that the good news is no longer just for Israel. Now it has come for all people. It now takes everything into account and provides a big picture and eternal solution in Christ. So Paul says, what are you waiting for? They can't believe the good news if they don't hear it proclaimed. So support and send me. I'll tell them. 
How else should the church respond to the unfathomable riches of God's grace? By offering our lives to serve God. It would also be silly to think too highly of ourselves. Pride leads to falling away. Faith, not works, are what matter. Instead of giving in to bitterness and vengeance for being wronged, we forget. Instead of seeking power from other authorities, well, we pray for them and support them as much as we can because our gospel business is too important to waste time messing with less important matters. And it no longer makes sense to be petty. We all serve with different abilities and gifts. What matters most is love. God's plan of salvation is nearly complete, so we make every effort to live at peace and show mercy and forgiveness to others. If Christ died to make us one, we should think very carefully before hassling over things that are not central to our faith. Paul encourages individuals asks for their prayers, and encourages the church not to give way to those who divide them or try to take away from Christ by reinstituting Torah regulations. Instead of works or rules, they should cling to Jesus and his gospel as their only hope, and the only hope for the world.